guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you my holy grail items from the drugstore. Now, most of these items I have repurchased a bunch of times, so that's why I'm calling them my holy grail items. There are some products from the drugstore that I really, really do love, um, but they're kind of newer in my collection, so I didn't really want to include those. I wanted to include ones that I have been loving for at least a year or more, and ones that I've purchased multiple times. So let's get started. The first items that I want to talk about are eyeliners. Now I have three here. I have two of like a liquid kind of consistency and then a um, kind of liquid pencil consistency. Now this one is my absolute favorite holy grail eyeliner of all time. It's the only eyeliner that I actually use. I've never even tried any MAC eyeliners or really any other ones. This has just been doing it for me. So once I find something that I absolutely love, I really don't go and venture out to get anything else. I'm kind of content with what I have. And then it's also like $11 or $10 because it is a drugstore product. This one is the Carbon Black Extra Intense Liquid Pencil Eyeliner by L'Oreal. And again, I've been using it forever and it glides on so smoothly. It's like ridiculously smooth and black. I love this eyeliner so, so much. Um, it's good if you are have problems with your waterline like putting eyeliner on your waterline and then it kind of gets all over your under eye or it smears because what even though this is really creamy once it's in your waterline it doesn't move it sets and it's really really good with that I actually thought that I could use it for a smoky eye and put it all over my lid and then um, have time to blend it out and put on an eyeshadow on top but it's actually not the best for that because it dries so fast. So it's really good for the waterline. It's really black. And I've probably gone through 10 of them at least since I've been using it. And like I said, this is the only eyeliner that I ever use for my waterline. The other two are, uh, like I said, like a liquid pen kind of consistency. And this one is in a brush form. And you've seen these in my videos a ton. Like this is nothing new to you guys. This is the Physician's Formula Pen Eye Booster Eyeliner and it is another really nice black um, eyeliner and it's really easy to use and it glides really nicely. I use this in my um, how to do wing eyeliner tutorial because I think this is really, really great for beginners and it's just, like I said, really easy to use, nice and black. I've used this, I've probably gone through at least four or five of these. Um, the only complaint that I have is that it's not matte and a lot of people like matte eyeliners but for me, that doesn't really bother me. I don't know. I really, really enjoy this one and it lasts a long time. All you have to do is go like this and it kind of pumps in the product and it's just, I don't know. I love it. It's perfect. The next one is the cheapest one of the bunch. This is the NYC Liquid Liner and it is about $1.99 from the drugstore and I'm sure you guys have heard about this. This is nothing new. This is all over YouTube, Instagram, whatever. It's really popular because it's really good. Um, it is really nice and black and matte and I'm going to close up on all the products so you'll be able to see that. The only complaint that I have is that I don't think it's that great for beginners because unlike the Physicians Formula one, you can get really close here to the actual applicator and that tends to be a comfort thing for people who are just beginning with eyeliner. It's almost like using a pencil. When it comes to this one, you cannot get like right here because that's not how it's designed. The cap is so far away that it gets hard. Even for me sometimes it still gets hard to use this one. But I deal with it because one, it's super cheap, and two, it's really black and it dries super matte. So I still think it's a really good eyeliner. I will repurchase this again. This is actually still my first one, but it's done. Like I'm barely getting used out of it. Like I need to get another one, but I try to get as much product as I can out of these products before I buy another one. But these are definitely my three Holy Grail eyeliners right now and this one of all time. Like I don't even know if I will switch to anything else for my waterline because this just work works for me. I'm just gonna stay on eyes because it's easier. These are the Duo Eyelash Glues. And these are actually the glues that they sell at MAC. They don't sell eyelash glue except dual at MAC. Um, but this you can actually find at CVS. Uh, I think Rite Aid sells it or Walgreens. Everybody else, like any other drugstore. But I know I picked these up at CVS. And I have here the clear white one and the dark toned one. I think this is a really great glue. The only thing that I don't like is that it's not latex free and like I mentioned in that video, if it's not latex free, it's not the best for people who are obviously allergic to latex. So that is my only complaint with it. Other than that, it's a great eyelash glue. 
Like all eyelash glues, it doesn't dry right away. If I found an eyelash glue that I put the glue on the actual eyelash and I could pop it on my eyes right away, I would be in heaven because that is the most annoying thing about eyelash glue. But nevertheless, I still really, really love these. I never have a problem with my eyelashes lifting or anything like that unless I have like really watery eyes or I didn't put enough glue in the inner corner. But yeah, I always have luck with these. They last a really long time, which is good. I always lose the caps. I don't know what is wrong with me, but I lose the caps to all my eyelash glues. It's just, it's stupid. It's ridiculous, but um, yeah. These are just really good to have in your kit if you're a makeup artist or if you're just doing makeup in general. Like I said, they're great eyelash glues and they're easy to use. And yeah, just really love these. I do want to mention a couple of concealers because these are the best concealers that I have ever used. Um, I know a lot of people love the... What is it called? It's the one with like the little sponge ball on top and you kind of put it on. I'll have a picture here if I can find one, but a lot of people love that one. To me, I have used it and it didn't give me enough coverage or it just, it wasn't enough for me. Like I it didn't really do it for me, but for me, the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer from the drugstore is the bomb. It is the best drugstore concealer out there. I really think so. Um, I originally was, I originally found this looking for a yellow tone concealer because it's so hard to find pretty much yellow tone foundation or concealers in the drugstore. Um, when I go into the drugstore, it's usually like pink or beige. There's nothing really a nice yellow undertone, which I need. So that is one reason I absolutely love this. And the person that I actually found this, like looking on YouTube, was uh, Makeup Geek before she was, it had to be at least a year or two ago before she was really, really big. So um, I took her opinion because she said it was yellow base and I was in love with it ever since. And I have the color uh, 20 Sand Sable. Now they're not all yellow base, but this color is and it's perfect for me. Absolutely perfect, I love it. It um, It's not like the best for highlighting just because I didn't get a color that light. I love it for spot concealing and underneath my eyes, but I don't do that Kim K highlight really ever. I only do it if I'm doing a smoky eye or I want that really dramatic look. So that doesn't really bother me that it's not like super highlight-ish. Highlight-ish? Highlighting-ish? I don't know. But yeah, I really love this concealer. I bought it probably, I don't know, like five times or something like that at least. Yeah, so that's it with this one. I have the NYX, uh, what is it? HD Photogenic Concealer. I just wanted to say Photogenic Concealer. And this is in the color CW06. I don't really know what that means, but this one was more on the beige side compared to the Fit Me one, which is why it's not like my number one favorite. You can even see them next to each other when I close up. This one is a lot more pink and beige, but it still works when, it's blends, when it blends out or when I blend it out with my finger on my skin, it's still fine. But I definitely like the Fit Me one more. Um, but I think this one is good for people who have more oily skin because it tends to dry a little bit more matte and um, yeah, it's definitely not as like liquidy as the Fit Me one. Not that that one's like super liquidy, but this one is more on the matte side. And I just appreciate this one as well. I like it. The only thing that I don't like why it's not like on the same level as this one is just because it doesn't have that yellowish undertone. But they do have about five colors that you can choose from. So um, there might be a more yellow one in the collection. I think it's just that it's on the darker side and I like my concealers to obviously be a little bit lighter to conceal and do a little bit of highlighting. So that's my only complaint with that, but I really do like this one too. Also, talking about eyes, you guys have seen probably all of these things in my videos, let's be real, but definitely this mascara. I use this pretty much all the time. If I'm not using this one, it is the MAC one, just because I had bought that one, it was newer, and I wanted to try it out. But my L'Oreal Telescopic is everything to me. <laughs> if they ever discontinue this, um, I was going to say concealer, this mascara, I would probably be like devastated. Borderline dramatic, but I'm telling you, this is the bomb. I love this so much. Um, the reason why I love it is because it has a really, really tiny, tiny wand and the bristles are so small. They're like little teeth, I feel like, and they just grab onto every little lash and separate and lengthen. I really don't care about volume. It's not something I look for in a mascara, so um, yeah, that's not like a big deal to me. 
So this one does not really do much for volume. I think if you layer it with a volumizing mascara that it will work in that way because it, it's not clumpy. It separates, like I said, so I think if you put a volumizing mascara and then separate and lengthen with this, it would be a great match. I'm not the type to layer my mascaras. It's just something I don't really care for. But yeah, this one just does it for me. Um, the, when I went to go pick it up, they didn't have the carbon black one, but that's the one I usually use. So that's why this one's in the gold tubes. This is just the regular black one. Um, I don't think it's that big of a difference, but if I can get a blacker mascara, in my mind, I'm gonna get the carbon black one. So for brow products, I am in love with and is my holy grail eyebrow pencil, the Maybelline New York Define a Brow in medium brown. That's really important because it is my perfect brow shade. It's not too dark and it's not too light. It's just like perfect, I love it. And it's just a retractable brow pencil. And if I go up too much, then I can't push it back down. So I can't get too, like I can't push it up too much. But I will, you guys will be able to see it again, like when I'm closing up on the products. And this one I started using, oh man, probably like three years ago, I want to say. I want to say three to two to three years ago. And I try other brow products and I always go back to this one. I don't know. It just, it's really easy to use. The only thing I don't like is this like comb thing. Like this does nothing for me. If it had a spoolie on the other end, this would be a dream. But um, other than that, I love everything about it. Like I said, it's very easy to use. It's retractable. The color shade is perfect. They have about four or five different colors, I want to say. And um, yeah, I just really like it. The Anastasia Beverly Hills ones, I was tempted to try, but they're expensive and they run out really fast from what I heard. This one is about $10. And although I can go through this probably within a month or month and a half, sometimes two months, um, I don't mind spending half the price than a Beverly Hills Anastasia one or whatever. Um, but I never tried those, so I can't really do like a full-on comparison. I just think that this is the closest you're going to get in the drugstore, and it's definitely worth to try. I like it for a more natural brow, but you can also get heavy-handed with it like I did today. <laughs> Um, but I kind of like that because I can use it for a more natural brow, like I said, or I can get a little bit more of a dramatic brow out of it. And this is the only thing I have on my eyebrows today. And yeah, this is another holy grail, obviously. So my favorite lip liners in the drugstore, and now um, CVS is carrying NYX, so I don't feel guilty talking about this. They are the NYX ones. The colors I have here are Peekaboo Natural and Nude Pink. Yes, Nude Pink. And I think I have a couple more, um, but these two are my favorite colors. Peekaboo is more of like a brownie nude. It's actually more of a brownie pinky nude, but it's not, yeah, it's not like too, like brown, like whirl, like what I have on, but it's definitely more on the brown side than nude pink, which you will see close up as well. And nude pink is definitely more of a nudie pink. The name definitely suits itself. But I definitely recommend the NYX ones, especially if you're trying to build your kit. They're not that expensive and they have a lot of colors and I think they're really good quality. They do last on the lips. They're creamy, but not too creamy. And the pencil is easy to sharpen. I just really like them. I mean, I have really no complaints about them. So that's just the NYX lip liners. Staying on the NYX bandwagon, I have the butter lip glosses right here. And these are a cult favorite here on YouTube. So again, nothing too special or anything like that. But um, yeah, these are just really good lip glosses. And I do have the Gerard Cosmetics lip glosses and I really like them, but I feel like if you're gonna spend $20 on a lip gloss, you almost might as well just go to like Chanel or something. These are like the same thing to me as the Gerard Cosmetic ones, except that you get a light with that one and you get a mirror, which is okay with me to spend only $5 and not get the mirror and the light. So yeah, that's just like a little comparison on the side, but I love these. They're really, really buttery, hence the name. Um, the colors are pretty pigmented. This one is Merengue and it's really nice and pigmented, especially for a lip gloss. They're not sticky and they last a pretty a nice amount of time on the lips. So that's all things that I look in a lip, look for in a lip gloss. My favorite two colors out of the collection are nudes and it's tiramisu and creme brulee. 
because honestly, I don't really like bright lips to be um, shiny. I kind of prefer my lips that are nude to be shiny and then my bright lips to be more in the matte or semi-matte or something like that kind of style. So um, yeah, tiramisu and creme brulee are my favorites. Creme brulee is just going to be like your classic nude. It reminds me a lot of um, the nude from Gerard Cosmetics, but actually tiramisu does as well. So tiramisu is actually even more so because this one's more of like a brownie nude. So yeah, just a classic peachy kind of nude in a way. And then this one tiramisu is more like a brown nude. Both are really similar, but I absolutely love them on the lips. And then my last lip favorites from the drugstore are my Wet n Wild lipsticks. And yeah, I'm sure these are no surprise to you guys either. Um, I hear about these all the time. I mean, they're $1.99. You're not going to get that at a drugstore with the color payoff. Like, it's just not going to happen. This one right here is Sugar Plum Fairy, and this is one of my favorites. It did make it into my favorite lip colors for fall. They're really creamy, and uh, a lot of people say they're drying on the lips. I honestly don't think so. I think they're actually pretty creamy, even though they're a matte to semi-matte formula. Um, but I would just say, like I always say, throw in some chapstick and you'll be fine. I mean, they're definitely workable for $1.99. I can't stress that enough. And my favorite color from the collection, I actually don't, do I even have it here? I'm going to have it here because I think I used it recently and it's probably in my purse, but it's, um, the peachy one. I'll have it linked down below with everything else. I've used it in a video, I think probably in the summertime, but I love that nude. It's like such a pretty peachy nude and it's one of those nudes that's not dead on your lips and it doesn't look like, um, yeah, like you have dead lips. Like I hate those nudes that just wipe out your face and look like you have concealer on your lips because I honestly don't think that's cute. But um, yeah, that one is like my love holy grail, one of my holy grail nudes of all time. Next I want to mention two foundations. Unfortunately, the one foundation, the other foundation that I want to mention is not in my presence right now because I finished it up and I haven't repurchased it just because I have a bunch of foundations I'm trying to go through. So I'll have it listed down below and that one is the Revlon Color Stay for um, normal to oily skin types. I really love that one because I feel like it looks better on the face as the day goes on for some reason. And even though it is a matte like foundation, it gets a little dewy throughout the day, but in a nice way, not in an oily, greasy, disgusting way because nothing is worse than that, especially on my oily ass skin. So I really, really like that one. But um, the one that I do have in my hand is one that I really don't hear that many people talk about. It's the Superstay Makeup um, by, which one is this, Maybelline I want to say? It looks like Maybelline's packaging. Yes, Maybelline. And this one is a no transfer 24 hour wear foundation. I have the color True Beige and this one's a little dark for me right now because this is my summer, my summer shade. But um, you guys know my style of foundation. I like things that are matte, that are going to last all day, that are full coverage. And this to me is very comparable to the Estee Lauder Double Wear. This one to me is kind of the drugstore version. Um, again, I don't really hear that many people talk about it, but I was using this like crazy in the summer. Again, it's I haven't really been using it because it's not my color. And I always prefer my Estee Lauder Double Wear over everything, even though these two or that one and this one is very similar. But um, yeah, I just figured I'd mention it because it is one that I will probably always keep with me in my kit and also repurchase during the summer months because I don't like spending money on a foundation that's only going to match me for two or three months. So I usually will just pick up one from the drugstore and this one has been the one that I have been picking up for the last couple years. So it's again in the color True Beige and it's kind of too dark for me because again my summer shade. So yeah. It's a good one. So the hair item that I want to mention is the Aussie 3 Minute Miracle Conditioner. And this one I purchased probably about four or five times as well. It's a really, really good deep conditioner and it can also be used every day because I don't think it's heavy or weighs my hair down in any way. It smells so good. I can smell it without even opening it. It smells like coconut, beach, like suntan lotion. It just smells so good. I love the way it smells. That's really what drew me to it. I love like anything that smells really good. Who doesn't? So it does work really nice in my hair. I feel like it does hydrate my hair. I don't think it does anything for like split ends or extremely dry hair. Hair like mine that needs a trim really bad, but I don't want to because my hair is finally growing. But it does make it nice and soft and it helps me, you know, obviously when I'm doing my blowouts and stuff, it just helps detangle and get my blowouts nice and smooth. 
Um, again, it's not going to do anything for those really dry ends or really dry damaged hair, but it helps a little bit. And for people that have hair like that, I think this would be good every this would be a good everyday conditioner. Um, not necessarily like a deep conditioner or a mask, but I do use this on like an everyday basis. I don't wash my hair every day, that's why I say everyday basis. But if I'm trying to do like a really deep conditioner, this is not really what I use. Um, I'll use like an extra intense mask. But again, this one's really good, and I think it's like $3 at the drugstore, so it's definitely good. Okay, guys, so that is the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and comment down below if you did. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye! Okay. Okay, guys. <coughs> the first items that I want to talk about are eyeliners. Now, ooh, hello. Don't forget to subscribe. <coughs> I've had it, I don't think it'd be a deal breaker. And what else? I feel like I have something else to say about it. Helpful to try, or that makes no sense. What? This formula, eye booster, eye pencil, or the NYX ones. I absolutely love the NYX, um, what is it? Pencils? Why, do I, why can't I talk today? Please let me know down in the comments down comments bar? Comments bar? Comments down? There there? Where's the color on this one? Lip liners, they're awesome. So uh, why? I can't reach. Okay, I would I just Okay, next I wanna Really? Why is that?